Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we get a couple of pieces of equipment that are much needed here at the island. Carol makes another delicious, simple meal. Spring has finally sprung, and we talk to some of our friends who are doing the Pan American Highway. As you know, Dan has a channel of his own. Go check it out. It's at Dan Van Stralen. And we're super excited to announce that this week, also, Pete has posted his first video on the Adventure Guys in a long time. They posted a couple of years ago, but Pete's got an awesome video up there called My Story. You've got to see it. The links will be below as well. When the time my parents had allotted for the trip came to an end, we all really wanted to continue. So they said, okay, we could do that, but we'd have to learn a way to make income while on the road. So we began learning about content creation, digital marketing, and eventually we started a YouTube channel, The Epic Family Road Trip. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm Carol. I'm Caroline. I'm Peter Jr. I'm Dan. Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic Family Road Trip. Trip. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down the road. So guys, Carol and I are back doing some planning for our upcoming trip to Alaska. And uh, at the moment we have our friends, Peter and Kathy Holcomb on, not on the phone, they're on, uh, what is it? It's like Google chat or something, Google meetings. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, so we're face to face with them. And where are you guys right now? We are in Nassara, Costa Rica. Uh -huh. We have driven all the way through Central America for the last three months. I think we're on our seventh country wow. since wow. Uh, the new year. And um, it's amazing. amazing here. The surfing is good. There are howler monkeys in the trees. It's <laughs> very cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was pretty jealous of your comment. Hey, I wish you were out here surfing with me. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. Yeah. We need surf friends. So the, the official Pan, Pan Am starts at Prudhoe Bay then? Yeah. There's a little bit of debate about it because, yeah. you know, the Dempster is so aesthetic because you can drive all the way to the ocean. Right. Um, but the Dalton is, I think, 60 miles further north. Further so north. that's like the northernmost point. Last summer you took the ferry north or south? South. We okay. drove up, ferry back. Right. So we're yeah. thinking of doing that in reverse. Okay. And taking the ferry off. Um, so. Yeah. What do you recommend with that? Well, my only thought there is you can push the season a little further. And when the roads start to get bad, you're on the ferry going southbound instead of dealing sure. with driving through the snow and so um that allowed us to push it a little more and then you're in coastal alaska which gets a little rainy but um it's still beautiful and it's yeah. it's not cold like it is in the interior so right um the other thing is the salmon are running in the fall and so uh, in order to see the salmon you need to be there kind of august september um, and that's a really neat thing. That's when you get to see all the bears congregating and yeah, go salmon, salmon fishing, fishing and all that, which is really cool. Those are really good points we hadn't thought about. One of the neat things on the Dalton is, you know, Gates of the Arctic and Anwar line like the whole second half of the road. And so you're in just this extraordinary wilderness environment. And Carol, cool. you're going to love it. There's got to be sheds everywhere oh, because... Yeah. I was just thinking that. <laughs> yeah. You're reading her brain. Wow. It's just wonderful. So definitely bring the binoculars. Definitely. Bring the bear spray. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> when we got to Baja, we realized that we'd been asking the wrong questions the whole time preparing for our trip. And we were like, dang, we should be writing this down so we actually can share this with the people that then ask us about what do we do going to Baja. So right. um, that kind of was the birth of our field guides was the questions that we didn't know to ask. And right. um, so we started writing those down and then we started adding in our campsites and all the other little things. And we thought, well, 
this could be a fun thing just to offer our patrons. So yeah. So then we started doing these field guides. We did them for Baja. Then we went up to Alaska. Then that next summer, and um, made a series of field guides for up there. And um, we just wanted to share it with you guys because we think it's just some good information, cool. and it just kind of puts it all into one place. That's really that's going to be handy, and I mean we'll tell our audience about it and give them a link where to find it. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. I can't wait for the Famagogo travel book to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. You put all of these, put all of these in chapters, and uh, yeah, and, and, and you got yourself a, a guide. Look out, Lonely Planet, here we come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of people just, they have these big lounge chairs that are up on a place right. called the Solarium, which is basically a three-sided enclosed deck on the top of the ship. And so it's got a roof, it's got walls on three sides, it's got heaters, and so you're protected from the elements. Some yep. people set up tents on the deck and camp up there. Wow. Um, we just got... Um, lounge chairs and put a thermarest and a sleeping bag on them and it was fabulous you just watch the stars go by the northern lights oh, wow. there's whales like it's a really yes. cool experience i think i would want to do that yeah which one did you prefer or um they both have they both have merits um this last time we had a cabin going back and it was really nice to be able to store all of our camera gear to have that uh, locked up whenever right. we wanted to go wander around the deck without carrying a giant bag with us everywhere we went. Good point. Nice. I bet yeah. he loves it there. You can just run. Yeah. He's a, he, he does love it. You wouldn't believe how beautiful yeah. some of these are. And you, you can drive right onto the beach almost. Wow. You're just right in the grass, right by the sand and rocks. Nice. And there's a little creek running by and there's salmon running up the creek right there wow. so the true yeah. alaskan experience right there oh yeah Real deal. yeah and then just 10 minutes down the road there's another creek and there's just anywhere from four to ten grizzly bears kodiak bears, kodiak sure. bears the big one. Wow. and they're just feasting on salmon and you can photograph them and watch them and they're they're <laughs> like literally 50 feet from you it's awesome so, so you guys having fun down there yeah, Oh my gosh. On your trip? It's amazing. Yeah. It's been quite an education coming down here. Sure, I can imagine. You know, we, we learned a lot last year going to Baja, and then you go into mainland Mexico, and that's a whole other world to learn about. Um, just very different and beautiful. Yeah. So but we've just gone in there super smiling and had a great time and just enjoyed the process, and um, everybody's been really nice back. Nice. So. It's been super helpful, and we've managed to pantomime and butcher our way through <laughs> terrible Translate. Spanish and Google Translate. You learned a few words? I heard yeah. on your last video a couple of words coming out. There's a few. Yeah. <laughs> Not ones you can repeat, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you guys want to follow along with Peter and Kathy, they have a YouTube channel, and we'll, we'll make sure to put the links below, plus Instagram and all that good stuff. Um, you're putting out weekly videos, right? We are. We're posting yeah. every Friday at 5 central time awesome yeah we'll make sure everyone gets the links and uh checks you guys out and follows you all the way down to the bottom and back oh, i guess that'd be great thanks so much <laughs> all right thank you. well thank you so much for your time and for all those good tips we've already learned a ton yeah and uh we'll get into those guide books and uh check them out and make sure we are informed before we leave yeah, yeah. Well, you're gonna you're gonna learn your own tricks and tips too that you know, there's just so much to learn. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. Well, and good. Always, let us know if you have any other questions. We We're will. always here to help. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, thanks, guys. We really appreciate it. And uh, like we always say, we'll see you down the road. Awesome. <laughs> I can't wait. All right. Big hug.
So if you recall, back in 2021, Carol and I were driving in the Arctic. We were north of the Arctic Circle, and we were stopping for a quick lunch of freeze-dried, pre-packaged, uh, freeze-dried foods. I was uh, looking into the future, and I said, what we want to do, our long-term plans, is to buy our own freeze-dryer. And what I've been reading up on those is you can make your favorite meal, like make a beautiful curry meal, make it double what you're going to eat and then take the second half freeze dry it takes 24 hours i think and pack it in a mylar bag and so going forward on the epic family road trip at some point we're going to have our own freeze dried foods that we take on trips and so that day has finally arrived we're super excited because we have in our possession a harvest right freeze dryer and uh we can't wait to start freeze drying food making meals that we can take on our trips and also storing food away for the winter. We've never used one before, um, so this is gonna be a learning curve. And we don't know if our solar and battery bank has the capacity to run it quite yet. Step one, we are gonna put it in the shed. They make a bit of noise and they have to run for 24 hours usually. So you don't really want it in your house. Uh, maybe in a basement or something would be fine, but here because of uh, we're in a small cabin, we have room for it in the shed and then we're going to take these uh, two by fours in the tabletop there and make a bench for it so it can sit you know 36 inches off the ground and there will be a shelf under for the pump and for all the accessories that go with it like mylar bags and all that stuff so let's get to it let's get building a shelf and and um, try to install and operate our new freeze dryer. So we're just moving the water tank. If you recall, we put this in here two winters ago when we stayed over for the winter. But we'd pump water into it and use it for our house. We're going to take it out and make room for the freeze dryer. But um, we may still use that next winter or we may go to a different water system. So in the meantime, it'll, it'll definitely come in handy around the, the island here somewhere. Solid table. It's not a piece of household furniture, but it definitely does the job. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Oops. Really far away, it almost looks like we did a good job. As you can see here, we have a new washing machine. We loved the old one and it was perfect. Um, we just kind of wanted to get something that was a little bit more efficient and we wanted to preserve the old one um, back to where it originally was on the island. But this one is really great. It's super quiet and it draws barely any power from our battery bank. Um, doesn't use very much water and uh, it's so simple to use. The boys can even use it. But uh, yeah, I like it a lot because 
it spins enough that it almost dries your clothes. So it's like, um, it really helps when I put it on our wind powered line to um, dry out the clothes really fast so I can just kind of get through all my laundry during the day. So it's been a rainy week that we've been having and this morning we woke up to this glorious sunshine. So I thought I'd be making a early lunch for everyone because we're just doing uh, little projects around the cabin and island. So lasagna it is. If you want to see this full video of this meal, head on over to our new channel called Simple Meals. I'm going to be cooking some of our family's favorite meals in the great outdoors. Make sure to subscribe. I'll be posting my first video next week. So I'm going to be making a zucchini lasagna. And this you can just kind of, it's at the end of the week. It's Saturday. I want to use up all my ingredients that are going to start to go bad. So it's the perfect recipe for that. And you can also use noodles. I just like using zucchini. The nice thing about this is you can cut them lengthwise to make like a long noodle. Or if you want to like do a kind of more of a bowl style, you can dice it up and just mix everything together that way. I'm doing a mix of hot sausage and some beef. I'm going to cook up the sausage a little bit before I add the beef. 
the beef doesn't take as long. I'm roasted my tomatoes just because I only had a half a can of tomato sauce. Put a little bit of the campfire char to it. This is something that's super simple and uh, it'll just add so much more flavor than just getting it out of a can. I love the texture of the ricotta. A super simple lasagna, ready for lunch. So that will take about, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes and I'll be ready. So, bon appetit. Isn't it nice? Bazinga. Yeah, Lando's been laying in the sun all day. It was so hot just a second ago, Lando. With the leftovers, we should try out the new freeze dryer. That'd be perfect. Mm. Onion was done over the fire too, huh? Mm. It's right in the coals in there. Mm. Have the tomatoes for it. Good. I can't wait to do the garden and have a different oh. variety. You know. It is rosemary. Having fresh herbs on any meal is mm -hmm. such a difference. A lot of your stuff's coming up there already, right? Eh? 